another minus 30 day. Another day of trucking. It's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a busy day. We better get to it. The old Pete is running. She started up just fine. No issues. She's been a really good girl this past couple of weeks. I guess we worked out all the bugs. And it's always like the beginning of winter too, right? Everybody gets used to summer. And just like our human bodies, it takes us a month or two to uh, get used to the cold weather. The truck's the same thing. If you if you don't properly, well, if you don't have a place to park them indoors, you know, when the first couple of cold snaps, uh, all the moisture that's built up throughout the summer that maybe you didn't notice or didn't pay enough attention to, it freezes up. And if that's in the lines, it'll freeze up your valves, it'll freeze up uh, your fuel lines, it'll it'll freeze, it'll it'll run, wreak havoc on your truck. Uh, it's always best to be able to park your truck indoors, but I mean, we have what 200 trucks, we can't park all 200 trucks indoors. So we have to be able to cope with the cold. So next winter we'll do things a little differently and we'll try to prepare a little bit better. I'm not sure if that's what the issue was, but there was obviously an issue with moisture in this truck. It could just be that it's old. It's got almost 2 million kilometers on it, like 1.6 million miles or something like that. It's, it's old. So we expect issues to arise, but we want to do our best to make sure we take care of it so that uh, when they do arise that they're little issues and not big issues. We're lucky that this winter has been little issues, just little freeze ups here and there. It's needed to be like thawed out a few times. It had a couple of valves uh, replaced and, uh, and a few other things. It's been pretty minor. And now it's running well. Got her all accustomed to the winter. So we got a couple more weeks of this yet before it starts warming up. So we're gonna make the most of it. I gotta go hook onto that trailer now. It's waiting for me. I gotta bring it into Winnipeg. And remember I explained this yesterday? I'm gonna bring that trailer into Winnipeg. Then we gotta bring it somewhere where it's gonna get loaded for our winter ice roads up north. Gonna drop that there, gonna run over to another place, grab a trailer, bring it here. Run back to that place, grab another trailer, bring it here. Grab a trailer from here, go back to the place that we dropped the first trailer at, and load up another load for our winter ice roads. And do as many of those today as we can. We'll see how much time we have today. I mean, we only have a a certain amount of time to do this all in, but we're gonna get as much done as we can. We've got our trailer pulled out. I showed it to you yesterday, I'll show it to you again now. Uh, the axle is frozen though, or the, the brakes on the front axle are frozen. So we gotta go there and uh, convince them not to be frozen. With my snipe bar. And these, not the gloves, the, the guns under here. Don't look at me like that. They're there, it's just a baggy jacket. Just a baggy jacket. <sighs> so, it's my front axle. One second. Grab the bar. Where's my bar? There it is. Grab this guy. Gotta go do some convincing. This front axle here is frozen. It's stuck. As you can see it's been sliding a little bit here. It's just ice all the way over here. So I've just been trying to get it unstuck, not having much success. It's like the airbags are filled with air or are they? I have to double check a whole bunch of things. Winter trucking, let's go. All right, is that front axle all right? You keep an eye on it. You tell me if it's released or not, or if we need to do some more convincing. Clearly this trailer is an attention seeker. It wants some more attention. So I gotta crawl under there and see if I can break them free. But when I say break them, I don't actually mean break them. You still gotta be gentle under there. You don't wanna break anything. You just gotta hit just the right spot on the brake pad underneath there. It should release. We'll see how stubborn it is. Well, 
I've been under there negotiating with it for quite a while now. I'm just gonna put you down here and uh, let's see if my negotiations have paid off. The winches slide along the bottom of the trailer where you tie the straps into. This trailer looked like it had just gone through a monsoon and then instantly froze. There was six inches of ice on everything. It obviously came from a very wet climate and then into a cold climate here in Manitoba very quickly. I couldn't get anything to work. And then we, when I finally got that little tiny load tied down, the load got cancelled for me, or got pulled off of me and given to someone else, and now I have a different load behind me. <laughs> All those hours spent into getting that trailer ready to go in the morning, someone else is going to take it. I got a different load. I'm on the way to Brandon. I'm actually almost there. This has turned into an overnight, and that's a new development as well. This wasn't going to be an overnight when I left, otherwise I'd probably have a sleeper behind me. But I'm getting, uh, they're setting me up in a hotel tonight in Brandon because I have to be in Dauphin in the morning which is a little north of Brandon there's a trailer there so I'm gonna try to get this unloaded today yet in Brandon I'm gonna drop the empty trailer there then in the morning I'm gonna bobtail up the Dauphin grab a trailer there bring it to Russell Manitoba near the Saskatchewan border then bobtail back to Brandon grab my empty trailer and go home Okay, and remember this is trucking, okay? Remember, this is trucking, so it might change. Two or three times yet, okay? The day is still young, the sun is still in the sky. <laughs> That's my story for today. And I'm actually not complaining, whatever. This is a pretty good load. I like going to Brandon. It's about a two and a half, two and a half hour drive from Winnipeg. And I was expecting on headed, heading back home from here, but now, I can go kick my feet up in a nice hotel room and uh, maybe order some pizza. I always like staying in hotel rooms. I don't know why. I think it's because it's like, it's a room that I don't have to clean. <laughs> Not that I do a lot of cleaning. You know, my wife does most of the cleaning. And let's, let's give her the credit that's due to her. But uh, I don't know, something different. Maybe there'll be something good on TV tonight. Who knows? See what happens. So a night in Brandon it is. We're on Highway 110 here. Headed south. That's Brandon over there. You can tell by that big exhaust plume coming out of the horizon there. That's one of their factories. I'm not too sure what they're making there, but they're very they're working very hard all the time. You can always tell. I just gotta go down here and come in the east side of the city. Quickly deliver all this. The time is now four o'clock and they go home at 4.30. So we're gonna have to hurry it up when we get into their yard there. And then I've gotta go and find a hotel to stay at. I don't know where we're gonna stay yet, but we're gonna find out what Brandon has to offer. Brandon is the second largest city in Manitoba, just before Steinbeck. There's Winnipeg, then Brandon, then Steinbeck. It's in the west, southwestern part of the province. Now, if you keep going straight south here, eventually you'll end up in uh, about central North Dakota. Now, Bismarck is pretty much south of here. Give you a little frame of reference. My windows are kind of dirty, aren't they? Yikes. I'm gonna 
let the pipes sing in a little second here. In a bit, of, in, in one second, one little second. But one mile, we got to make a right turn. I'm not too heavy. I a bunch of transformers and stuff on my trailer behind me. Those are the Assiniboine River. This river uh, goes through Winnipeg and meets up with the Red River, uh, downtown Winnipeg, that way. things we like to do too. I've never come into Brandon from this direction before. I'm trusting you Google, I double checked your work. You better not have changed your uh, changed your routing. Sometimes they do that. Gotta watch them carefully. surrounding areas and if Brandon's bigger I'm guessing they probably have close to a hundred thousand it's a pretty big city maybe two hundred thousand is it the size of Regina I don't know I don't think so I think it's much smaller I, I don't know I'm from I'm from the southeast of Manitoba I don't know this part of the province very well well it sure was an interesting day it started off like we said yesterday, with a very busy schedule. And then it just turned into one thing to do. And then that one thing to do kind of stretched out and is gonna go into the next day now. <laughs> but that's trucking, things change and uh, stuff get moved around. I'm in Motel 6 in Brandon, just off Highway 1, right by the McDonald's, sort of uh, just east, a little ways east of the, uh, the Timmy's there that we stopped at with uh, Big Blue. And the Husky truck stop, just down the street. It's a it's a decent motel. Mm. Sixty five bucks a night for truckers. I think it's ninety five bucks a night for everyone else. But if you come in here and you show them a commercial driver's license, you get the truckers discount, and it's sixty five bucks a night. You know, it's not the fanciest, but it is pet friendly. All Motel 6s are pet friendly. So if I would have had Diesel with me, he could have easily stayed in here for free. No extra charge. That's why I always stay at Motel 6. It's just a habit for me already. Because when I traveled on the road with Diesel, I would always I would always want a pet friendly motel. So I'd always go to Motel 6. But it's, you know. It's definitely not a dump. It's very nice. It's sort of like a, a cheap... Kind of nice, you know, like a cheap Ikea kind of nice. No offense to Ikea, but you know. <coughs> Just waking up here the next morning, I got in here last night, had supper and pretty much went to bed. And now it's time to get on the road again. So I'm gonna have to continue that in tomorrow's vlog. So it was a little bit of a up in the air day. So I didn't really have much to share throughout the day, but I did take that load into Brandon here. We got it unloaded. And now I dropped that trailer there at that place and I bobtailed here. Now I'm gonna bobtail up to Dauphin. I have to pick up a big heavy trailer. I have to have permits for it and everything, which I've already got. And then I gotta take that just down the road, about 170 kilometers or just over 100 miles. But the thing is with the trailer, I could only drive 70 kilometers an hour or about 45 miles an hour. That's it on the highway. You just have to put your hazards on and that's as fast as you can go with that trailer. 
can't go any faster. So that 100 miles, 170 kilometers, is going to take uh, probably two and a half hours. And then once I drop that trailer there, it's so all I got to do is just bring it there, drop it. And then take that trailer, or no, drop that trailer there, bobtail from there, back over here where they've reloaded this trailer, hook onto that and go home. And like yesterday, things can always change. Well, it's, I, I kind of like that about trucking. It's unpredictable. It's, uh, it's always changing. It's never the same mundane tasks every day. I'm doing something completely different from day to day. Very rarely do I do the same thing two days in a row. I mean, we had a week like that the other week, and I was mentioning it. Like, this is strange. I've done the same thing every day for like three days in a row. Very rare. And I kind of like that. It switches it up and you know, keeps my mind fine-tuned. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this vlog here though, and uh, start tomorrow. And I'll grab some breakfast, and uh, we'll see you then. So take care, everybody. I hope you had a great day. Uh, from Brandon. Signing off. Oh, I did that the wrong hand. Signing off from Brandon. Is that how I end these things now? Why not?